Okay, cool. Um, so kind of shifting gears, uh, I believe this is our final talk of uh, t today's session. Um, and th this is a great one too, because uh, it, it's, it's a super interesting topic right now uh, in the ETH community. Um, you guys may be familiar with uh, EIP 1559. Uh, it's, it does a few things, but one of the most inter interesting and uh, potentially like controversial issues is the idea of, of fee burning, uh, which is a, uh, it, it's a uh, elegant, perhaps, way to, um, you know, get uh, eats inflation under control. It has some really interesting properties. On the other hand, you know, it, it's not something that's been, uh, you know, immediately embraced by miners. It's an interesting sort of uh, contrast of, of incentives. Um, but uh, our next speaker has some great insights on this. He's with Steak, Steak Fish. Uh, Chun Wong is going to tell us, uh, give us some insight into what they're thinking from their perspective and uh, perhaps just about 155 in, in general. So uh, I'll leave you to it, Chun. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Wang Chun, and uh, I'm from After Fu and also Steak Fish. Uh, today I want to talk to you uh, why miners should embrace uh, EIP 1559. And also share Aftopool's official position on EIP 1559. So, uh, I want to begin uh, talking about the Ethereum V today. And 8,823 uh, Ethers was paid daily in fees in January 2021. The, that's uh, a count of 40% of uh, mining reward. And income from fees for miners have reached a record high. And also, uh, Ethereum price also recently hit an all-time high. Price is important uh, for gas, since gas, gas is a price in Ether. So gas is not only expensive now, it's a very, uh, it's the uncertainty of uh, gas price has significantly uh, affect uh, the user experience on Ethereum network. And net uh, Ethereum network not just expensive, uh, but more difficult to use. So uh, here's a uh, tweet from Lily and uh, she says, ATH is great, but I prefer uh, usable Ethereum network. So we cannot keep going this on this way. So. Uh, we must have a broader vision beyond that, uh, you know, just the, uh, the minor profit. And uh, there's need to be a change to the uh, fee market. And the fee market need to be reformed. And EIP 1559 uh, uh, proposal to reform this uh, Ethereum fee market. Uh, it introduced a very different approach uh, from how gas is being priced today. Uh, its prim primary goal is uh, not just uh, uh, lower the gas fee, uh, but uh, the gas fee is set by supply and demand the Ethereum block space. Supply can be thought as uh, available uh, block space which can be increased by raising the gas limits, shifting the transaction off-chain using layer two solutions or adding more capacity to chain through sharding demand simply uh, represent the amount of uh, users that want to uh, use Ether. So EIP uh, 1559 increased, uh, it also improved the accuracy, uh, which user can estimate their gas price. So uh, this is a key innovation that uh, improve uh, the accuracy of uh, estimate uh, by having the base fee as part of block header. You can calculate to the minimum price. Uh, uh, we can calculate the minimum price uh, from the from the a better estimate. So uh, I think before we get started, we should like spend some time talking about what Ethereum is and what the Ethereum is not. Uh, first, the Ethereum is a platform. It's uh, mostly for uh, platform developers to make decentralized apps functioning more like an operating system for developers want to build decentralized applications. 
So Ethereum always been open and permissionless. And that means uh, let miners use their developers to participate uh, freely. Uh, Ethereum uh, is much closer uh, to uh, the desired state of decentralization. It leads to diversification of thought. And decentralization of power, uh, openness in development, and not many other projects uh, is, uh, is, is like Ethereum. So, and Ethereum is not Bitcoin. Uh, it's not just a cryptocurrency. Uh, Bitcoin's primary store of value and the medium of exchange. On the other hand, Ethereum is a blockchain based uh, software project. And Ethereum is designed not only for sending and uh, receiving value globally, but without a third party, but also bring smart contract and decentralized web to blockchain. So why Ethereum is successful? Why Ethereum is successful? It's because first, Ethereum is successful because of thousands of applications running on it. Ethereum is successful because of thousands of developers building on it. And Ethereum is successful because of you, because it is useful and because of people use it. That's one of the reasons the gas fee is uh, getting skyrocketed because the more and more people start to use Ethereum. Uh, you know why Ethereum is successful? The miners, period. Um, I must say, I, I probably can't agree with this opinion. So next, let's talk about the lessons we learned over the years. So uh, this is our story. Uh, I first discovered Bitcoin in 2011 slash dot. I was a participant. Uh, this is uh, how I got my first Bitcoin back in May 2011. I was a participant of a city at home, an internet based public volunteer computer project uh, using individual computer to analysis signal received by radio telescopes. Uh, which attempt to uh, find the evidence uh, of aliens. Uh, so my experience with uh, SETI at home was a nature bridge to uh, the concept of Bitcoin mining, and which uh, with mining Bitcoin in addition to secure the network, there is also a less block reward. So earn the block reward and uh, uh, I that yeah, make me uh, uh, quite like almost uh, immediately fall in love with, with this concept. So I immediately downloaded Bitcoin software out of my, on my laptop and uh, run it overnight, but I didn't uh, end up mining a single coin. So the second night I, I, I went to a local market, bought the GPU and started mining. And my mining farm in 2011, 2012, uh, which represent about 0.4% of the total network hash rate, uh, because of all the um, many rigs, uh, second hand, very little rim on it. Uh, they could not, when, when AC, Bitcoin ASIC was introduced, they could not easily repurpose to mine uh, other altcoins such as Litecoins. That's why I shut down the mining farm in two, early 2013 and moved on to other things like the uh, mining, uh, mining with uh, hardware is more like uh, uh, working on the client side like a web web browser, but uh, uh, since I retired the mining farm, I could have some time to uh, look further into the server side. That's how I started the mining pool. So next, uh, let's uh, let me tell you uh, tell you the story of uh, F2Pool. Uh, F2Pool uh, founded 2013. We are the oldest Bitcoin mining pool in China. And also worldwide, the second oldest Bitcoin mining pool still in operation. Uh, only after Slash, who already know you wanted to put mining. Uh, push come, push goes. I still remember uh, in the beginning, I used Deepit and spent the entire year 2012. And they have failed to upgrade their system support Stratum protocol. 
since the ASIC introduced with the Stratum port protocol, you cannot support uh, the mining and the big hash rate. So they soon uh, out of the market. And later is uh, ghash.io. Uh, ghash.io second mining through abandonment market, uh, most because they bank went bankrupt uh, due to attacks. And the third one, the BTC Guild, uh, they discontinued, discontinued uh, under the legal concerns uh, New York. So all the three is at some point have uh, one third of the network hash rate. And some people even argue that uh, DBIT uh, one time hit uh, 45% at some specs. So after pool is a multi pool from the very beginning. Uh, we launched uh, uh, in China in 2013. Uh, we were we launched the Litecoin mining only the second day into our operation, and soon uh, followed by Feedercoin and the CHN coin. Uh, we also uh, have a profit switch uh, mining between Bitcoin, Terracoin, and a few other Shard 256 coins. Uh, we merge mining with Namecoin, IX1, IZeroCoin, Dialcoin, and a few lesser known ones. Uh, in late 2013, uh, we started ProtoShares and also Dogecoin mining pools. So to date, we have mined uh, uh, over 40 billion Doge. And 2015, um, Bitcoin scaling was a bit, uh, was a hot topic in the community. So we were the first mining pool in trying to go against uh, Gavin's uh, 20 megabyte proposal. Later that year, scaling Bitcoin held in Hong Kong. And SIGWIT was the uh, 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 second day of the meeting. We were also the first one to express uh, our support. After our, uh, you know, there, there's, a, there's some on the table and under the table uh, engineers. So we also contribute a lot to the, uh, to fulfill the, the vision of SIGWIT. And uh, SIGWIT uh, eventually got activated in uh, 2017. And yeah, and, and later uh, Bitcoin Cash was born, but that's another story. Let's back to uh, Ethereum. Uh, in March 2016, uh, when the Bitcoin community is still uh, busy arguing like uh, BIP100, BIP101, BITV102, BIP109, uh, BIP248, all this uh, we uh, quietly launched our Ethereum mining pool and first uh, introduced Ethereum mining to the Chinese miners. A lot of other cryptocurrency services in China, they were uh, unaware of uh, Ethereum. They seen we launched uh, Ethereum mining and they see a uh, miner on board of Ethereum. They also follow the trend. So to date, we have uh, mined more than uh, 6 million Ethereum and in 2016 we mined uh, like 1.4 million Ethereum, uh, which was 11 million. But uh, last year in 2020, uh, we mined uh, uh, only uh, six, uh, 611,000 Ethereum, but which was uh, more than a million, uh, sorry, more than, more than a billion dollars. Just before we launched our Ethereum mining pool, uh, there was a pool called Drop Pool, which account to the 49% of Ethereum network hash rate. But only five days into our operation, uh, this is uh, our first um, uh, block uh, created on the Ethereum network, um, March 15, uh, 2016. And only, uh, only six days, uh, only five days into our operation, we have already uh, had 100 G hash per second and 5% of uh, total network hash rate. This also significantly uh, helped a decentralization of the uh, Ethereum network. So uh, we were uh, one of the few mining, probably the only mining pool uh, uh, who opposed the door fork. Uh, but Ethereum uh, uh, classic, uh, did not withhold the majority of the Ethereum community. Uh, five years ago in January, uh, I remember uh, walking message alert uh, trying to sell the BIP 109 
uh, of Bit Bitcoin Classic, which seems uh, coming from nowhere. Uh, Classic seems to have been uh, patented. So, yeah, but I had a privilege to take part of the history of Bitcoin mining, also how it works and how it failed. So I also have a witness the history of Ethereum's growth, which has seen what uh, works and what uh, failed. So um, it is, uh, you know, applying well applying the Bitcoin principle to Ethereum is dangerous, but uh, we can uh, we can we can have the uh, we can say that uh, Ethereum cash probably will not work either. And uh, let's talk about the future. Mm, Ethereum will uh, eventually switch to proof of stake. And we think about the road ahead, and there's still some people believe everything else rather than Bitcoin belongs to the so called category of shit coins. But two months ago, well, these people argue that Ethereum is a shit coin, or Ethereum is not shit coin. We launch of Ethereum 2.0 non custodial staking service. Two months later, uh, more than 200,000 Ethereum now safely stake with us, and we maintained a perfect record, having got a single slashing event. Uh, we worked toward a decentralized future, and that's probably why we decided to come in to support EIP-1559. Uh, because EIP-1559, not just uh, due to the miners, all the, uh, if, uh, if this uh, proposal uh, cannot be activated because of miners, I think all the trust to Ethereum will be shaken. And also, the second reason for why we commit to support EIP-1559 So why miners should uh, embrace EIP-1559? That's, I think, because uh, miners must be on the right and also on the bright side of history. Uh, thank you. That's, that's, that's what I've shared today. Thank you. Thanks, Chun. So that's uh, interesting news. So Stakefish unequivocally is supporting 1559. Uh, I think it's more like after pool. Stakefish is a staking provider, and uh, right now it's a Ethereum one point on network is still a rough work. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, yeah. If you don't mind, uh, maybe we'll have some questions from the audience here. We're a little bit really wrapping up. Um, uh, Chun, you know, one of, one of the interesting things with miners is, um, you know, this desire to be uh, you know, in the community generally, there there is a need for transparency. Um, if people want to get better tabs on what F2 Pool is doing or or Stake Fish, what's a good place to kind of see the um, you know latest news and messaging from you guys? I think Twitter is the best place for follow okay. us. Cool. My Twitter account is Seto Fishy, and uh, on the presentation, and uh, you can also follow Stake Fish F2 Pool official account. Great. I appreciate what you guys are doing because uh, in the mining space, sometimes it feels a little bit nebulous. Like um, people tend to think of miners as this big monolithic group, like giant miners. And of course, that's not that's not the case. There's different pools and uh, especially moving to, to stake will be, um, you know, it's going to be very nuanced, a, a, a real change. Yeah, in right. like uh, there have been a lot of misunderstanding to miners and mining community. And uh, Lots of people confuse a miner, mining pool. Uh, they are very different. Yeah. Great. Well, it looks like thank you for thank you for coming and just a shout out to F2 Pool and Stakefish for being a presenting sponsor of ETH Denver. We're very grateful for the support and the engagement and all the contributions. It's it's been very well done. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.